A week later, as I was doing my usual chore, I don't know where I was at, I heard this voice that says, you cannot hate. And I thought, I'm not the kind of person who hates anyone. That's not for me. And I kind of dismissed it. It just keeps coming back. You cannot hate. And I had to just kind of pause, and the next thing that came to me was the guest that I had that week, a week before. I had a little, little or some resentment towards the husband who was married to my Japanese friend. You know, just something difficult thing happened in the marriage, and I felt so sorry for her. And I probably felt, being a very good Japanese, I had a nice smile and entertained them without you know, showing any sense of, I wouldn't say hate, I don't think I hated anyone. But the next voice that came to me was, I love my children. I was startled. He was saying, whoever this I was, I loved my children. And I understood at that point well enough that children means all of God's children. He came to really speak to me gently, not condemning, that if I was the one to separate, these are the ones that I like, these are the ones I sort of like, these are the ones I don't really like, (laughs) which is also called hate. But if I don't include them in all that love that I is saying, that God is saying, I love my children, I basically hate that person. And I just knew that it was not my place, that love is present. And interestingly enough, from that point, I, so far, I feel that the hate is such a foreign um, feeling towards anyone, or even if someone is obviously he- hating me, it, just, it doesn't seem so real. And so it really became almost a transformation, and especially because I understood a little bit later, my husband who was going to graduate school, uh, by that time, the 10th year, I had great resentment, and I almost ignored this whole part that, you know, How do I react to this person? Well, he went altogether 15 years. (laughs) So I was really in the middle of a lot of stress, you know, raising two children and someone is going to graduate school for that long. I think he can really be in the Guinness school, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) Guinness record book. And his family used to say, how's your graduate school going? He is from uh, Colorado. His dad is like part-time ranch, um, you know, cowboy, a gradual student. <laughs> I even started to love my gradual stu- student husband. <laughs> so that's what happened. You know, I began to really see my identity as not because it's a good thing for the society to love someone, but to really understand the root of where your love comes from. That I don't really have to be the one choosing this one to love or not to love, but to understand that everyone is loved, and I have to honor that. This identity that I began to to, uh, have a little glimpse of is in the Bible, the very first chapter of Genesis. It says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, and God blessed them. And at the end of that chapter, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Well, Jesus says in um, his teaching as well, he says, Be therefore perfect even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. It's very difficult to sometimes see perfection because we are seeing things on a very physical level. You know, are things really organized? Does it look really pretty? Um, You know, I tried to look nice today, but, you know, most of the time we're judging constantly with our eyes and, you know, how we hear things. But the Bible consistently say these things. In another place called Habakkuk, it says, 
Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. That's King James period English. In modern English, it's you are of purer eyes, meaning God is, than to behold evil and cannot look on iniquities. This seeing things from perfection really seemed to be the key. And that's what Mary Baker Eddy beginning to see and focus you know, when we are talking about healing or angel messages. Um, the seeing from that perspective, God's perspective, seeing the perfection that God loves all of this, all of his children, we have to really think of what really perfection means. So I looked it up in the dictionary. It says that perfectus in Latin really means completed, finished, done. It had nothing to do with how things look physically. So if you remember the very first, the last thing that it says in the first chapter of Genesis says, God saw everything he had made and it was very good. It's done. I have a friend in Osaka, Japan. Maybe some of you have been to Osaka. He discovered this um, book in the library, public library in Japan, a translation that we have in Japanese. Simply by reading this book, I guess he, he called it like devouring. He's just really, not just reading on surface, but thinking while he was think, reading. He was healed of um, an illness called hepatitis C. And if you know anything about hepatitis C, it's incurable disease. So when he went to a checkup and when the doctor found out that he didn't have hepatitis C anymore, he was really surprised. And so was he. We asked him to write about this healing, and it was published in a weekly magazine called Christian Science uh, Sentinel. You have a real thin one like that probably out there. Every week we have healings that, like that um, printed. And right now we also have a wonderful website. Uh, if you go to spirituality.com, it'll take you to JSH, JSH-online, which is just an initial for our uh, periodicals that you can read these healings accumulated in the last 125 years. So, and then some of them have the angel stories as well. Finding that true identity is part of angels' work. That's speaking to us. Mary Baker Eddy also explains about how we actually hear these messages. There is a reason. She, she calls it Christ. Christ is what Jesus embodied. It's an ability to know your oneness with God. You're constantly hearing the messages. She explains it this way. Christ is a true idea, voicing good, the divine message from God to man, speaking to the human consciousness, anyone's consciousness. Christ speaking that you are good, you are whole, you don't lack anything, you don't hate, <laughs> you can only love. And this, in the office of, I would just call like office, you know, like it says Christ, and then their message is coming from that. It's almost like a sun and a ray that keeps going out. And it's really natural because when you think about Mary Baker Eddy's healing and when she connected the dots, she was very familiar with the of course, mind and body connection through homeopathy practice. But at that time when she connected the dots, she saw higher mind, divine mind. Bypass this mind and go straight to the higher consciousness that already knows our wholeness, our goodness, our strength, our creativity, that we have infinite ideas that we can use. We never run out of things. Anyway, so that divine mind, if that... You know, anybody would agree. The mind has to be a, a source of ideas. Don't you agree? Without ideas, there's no mind. And ideas have to, must come from mind. When you think about musicians, especially composers, most of the time they say they hear the melody. Where, are, where is the melody coming from? You know, that's 
One might would say just the whole universe will just come, all these ideas will come through a certain person, like a Mozart, you know, or Beethoven, who towards the end of his life he couldn't really hear, but was constantly hearing this music. So if that divine mind also is imparting these ideas, it has to be understood by each individual in the way that's easy for you to understand. Or a little child, perhaps? Even, I'm not sure, maybe a, a little dog have not really talked talk to me about anything, but sometimes they seem to know exactly what they're supposed to do, right? <laughs> I have sometimes come, uh, get a call, people asking um, healing through prayer for our horses. I just trust that the horse is also listening for that message to come. But at one point, I was not sure what's the difference then between this Christ that says, you know, the true idea of voicing good, whereas, you know, we have these angel messages. And one a friend who had been a teacher of Christian science explained to me, would you go? It's like Christ is saying, everyone can knit. An angel is teaching you how to pearl. <laughs> It's more specific, in other words. I think she was really trying to be kind to me. And, you know, that's how we can think about it. This Science and Health has a chapter called uh, Glossary, and it takes words that appear in the Bible and gives a spiritual meaning to it. It has a definition of angels here, too, and I'd like to read. It says, God's thoughts passing to man spiritual intuitions, pure and perfect, the inspiration of goodness, purity, and immortality, counteracting all evil, sensuality, and mortality. The limitation, the five senses. If five senses says, no, we can't, we should say, yes, we can, <laughs> according to our spiritual sense. I have a friend in uh, Singapore who is Sri Lankan, in 2004, December, if you remember, there was a big earthquake, Sumatra earthquake, and the, the wave got reached to, to Sri Lanka, where she was actually visiting after her niece's, uh, older niece's uh, wedding. They were all gathering in front of the hotel. They just had breakfast when someone, I actually have a little account that I printed out from the um, spirituality.com, it's, she said this way. This is next morning after they came back uh, from the wedding. While most of us were at the breakfast buffet, we heard a raging sound of window and water. Then a series of massive wall-high waves hit us, striking at about 8.45 a.m. At first, I held on to one of my nieces who had been sitting next to me but I was swept away along a doorless corridor of the hotel as more of the gigantic waves pounded on everything. I did not know how to swim. Furniture toppled over me, and I lost hold of my niece. Well, in person she had told me this story. There's a print version as well. But she had said, the thought that came to her, was one of the Bible verse that she just read that morning. Most of the students of Christian science study what we call Bible lesson, Christian science Bible lesson, that comes you know, weekly, fresh, from, uh, using citations from these two books, the Bible and Science and Health. As she was thinking, I don't know how to swim. As I just explained, wall-high waves striking her, and the thought came to her, from Psalms, I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. 